You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. It's an exciting day because there's a recipe in this book which I've discussed uh, a few times. I actually had to skip over it because I was waiting to get uh, certain items that aren't just easily available. Now, I've had to make some substitutions, but I think, generally speaking, I'm pretty close. This is the Easy Bake Gourmet. It's recipes of famous chefs, and I've gone through... Actually, you've seen all of this numerous times. I need to get to this. I did her recipe already, the carrot kugel, which I did last time. And then this one will be the one I'm going to work on next after I get this one done. It is the roasted quail breast with wild mushrooms and pomzana. Now, I have never made either of these things. I've never had quail, and it took a while to find the quail, but we finally got it. Well, actually, Mrs. LPS got it. And this looks like Rob Feeney. Is that his name? And then, let's see. Feeney with Lemure's sous chef, Marnie Colum. Okay, that's the picture. And they have two different year Easy Bake ovens. Let's see here. When Rob Feeney was six, his parents bought his older sister an Easy Bake oven, which was to be given to her for Christmas. Among Rob's presents that year was a toy truck, a truck which came in a box that was identical in size to the one that contained the oven. Somehow, once both packages were wrapped, the gifts were switched, so it was Rob who opened the Easy Bake Oven, and it was Rob who cried uncontrollably when he was told he had to give it up. Interestingly, it was me, not my sister, who liked to help out in the kitchen. If you can call licking the whipping cream whisk and sticking your fingers into the cookie batter helping. But it was also this... But it was also the early 1970s, and while the women's movement was in full force, his sister wasn't having any of it, so the mix-up was corrected. Still, Feeney couldn't help but feel a sense of ownership toward the oven, and frequently played with it, learning firsthand the power of the light bulb. It definitely piqued my curiosity. He remembers and provided a comfort level that would eventually get me to try cooking as a career. All right, so where was I struggling with this? Uh, I've got all this. This is good. Uh, here, the quail, a half of a quail breast boneless, and then the blueberry vinegar, I had to substitute for that, the white wine I'm using, cooking wine, and then there is lemon juice, so the lemongrass was the issue, and it said for the lemongrass, you can use the rind of the lemon, it's a good substitute for that, so I got that, I'm going to use that, I've got everything else here, I'm ready to go, I need to get this uh, started. So let me uh, move over to the mini kitchen and let's get that going. All right, so let me see. To start off, it is three tablespoons of olive oil. So let me get that going. There's the line. See, on the left is tablespoons. On the right is ounces. This has also got cups and milliliters. There we go. Three tablespoons. Slowly. Okay, perfect. All right, then it's going to be some time. What little time we have. And then some, uh, well, a potato, which I need to peel. And then some parsley. And then some salt. Okay, so that's everything I need. So that is the first part of the process. So I need to... Preheat the Easy Bake Oven, which has been on for 15 minutes, and I need to pour all of that oil into a pan. So let me do that first. All right, so it wants the, all of that into the pan, and that's going to heat up for 15 minutes while I prep the potato. So here we go. I know it's a lot of oil. It's going to fill most of the pan. It just seems like a lot to me, and it's not going to be the easiest thing to get out of the oven, but we'll give it a shot. Here we go. The oven is hot. They want that heated up. All right, let's push that in there. Slowly. Okay, so now it's time to prep the potato. All right, so basically, I need to peel the potato. Now, it does say super thin slices, and I don't have any type of mini mandolin. I don't even know if there's one on the market. 
but I have a regular mandolin so what I'll probably do now is go back over to the other side and get this sliced as thin as possible it said let's see peel the potato and using a mandolin or vegetable slicer cut it into paper thin slices I, mean, I guess I could try to do it with one of my little knives now let me try that first since I'm here in the mini kitchen it doesn't say what size potato either it doesn't say medium large small or how much potato you're actually needing so part of a recipe is to adapt as you move along to what you have in the kitchen. Okay, that's pretty good. Let me uh, get a cutting board and I'll cut that up. Okay, so I do have this and it's very sharp. So let's see if I can get thin slices with it. It's working pretty good. That one's a little thick, but the rest are pretty paper thin. Ooh, it all stuck to my knife. I think to fill that easy bake pan, I need to do a little bit more. I don't understand all that oil in there, but you lay this in there, then you cook it, then you take it out and flip it. I had a whole set of mini knives made for me, and this is one of the ones I requested. And I haven't used them much in the videos. This way now. Hmm, paper thin, let's see. You can almost see through that one. I think that's more than enough to put in that pan. So the next step says, once that's heated up, the oil, uh, peel the potato, do that. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is prep the other ingredients that go on top of that while the pan heats up. Two teaspoons of fresh thyme. That's gonna be a lot of removal on these because time is there's not a lot on each of these little stalks here and it doesn't say that chop the time after What do you think? That's probably one, let's see, one teaspoon. That's close. We're going to need more. Now, I, I've pondered on this one because of the little quail. It's uh, not something I've ever cooked. It's not the most pleasant thing to look at. But I thought, well... I'm going to show you the quail at some point. So if you're queasy about that, 
then I'll warn you before I show it to you. Well, I think I can do that. It seems to be peeling pretty good. There's a couple little sticks in there. I'll have to go through that. Because it's a half of a quail breast, which is tiny. I'll just do the rest of this while I'm here. Okay. That should be good for that. Now the parsley. I noticed my little lights were on, so I made sure I did that. And then the parsley, let's see, how much parsley? Four teaspoons. Now you think it should say, oh, chopped parsley, okay. What about the time? It doesn't say to chop it. I guess it's small enough just to leave it. So I'll have to chop this after this. So back to the quail, yes, I will definitely warn you. It, uh, it's, it's a little funny looking, but in the, uh, the honor of the recipe and expanding my cooking abilities, what I probably won't show you is cutting the little quail apart. I may or may not. Okay, that's probably enough to chop. But I have one more piece, so let's just get it all in there. And... Okay, so let's chop that up. All right, switching knives here. My hands are very tan. I'll take those leaves out. I don't think we need them. Now you're not supposed to take your knife blade. You'd want to use the opposite side. You don't want to scrape your blade. And I've done it in videos and no one's pointed that out. Okay. All right, so I think, well, let me scale those two out in another bowl so I know exactly what to put on top. Okay, so normally I would put my potatoes in water so they don't turn brown, but they seem to be holding their color pretty well. Okay, so two teaspoons of the thyme. And a little pinch. Okay. And then the two teaspoons, oh, it was three, wait, four teaspoons of the parsley. Okay, that's good. All right, so it's probably been close to the 15 minutes. I'm moving right along, uh, but I'll give it a few more minutes and then we'll do the next step. All right, so uh, these little hot plates, I have three of them. I've used them in the videos before, but I don't know if I've actually shown all three of them. There's that one, they're cooking, and then this one here is sniffing a pie, and then there's a little puppy, and then this one here, she's bringing the pie, and there's a kitty. They're handmade for sure. Had them for years, don't know where I got them, but uh, I thought they were pretty neat. So here we go. Let's get this out. I'm gonna go real slow.
It is hot oil. I don't know if there's an easy way to do this, but... Let's just grab it this way. Is that hot? It's like sticking to the bottom of the pan. Ooh, hot. That's why I was wondering why they have so much oil in there. And then layering this here. Let me change the camera here. And it says no more than an eighth of an inch thick. We should get some sizzling here. Yeah, that's already too much oil. Let me grab a little spoon. I was questioning that from the beginning, but thought, well, just follow the recipe. In a circular pattern, Trying to get the thinnest ones. Let me go one more layer around. This is supposed to brown and then um, you're going to drain the oil at some point. Okay, let me throw a few small ones to fill in some of the edges there. Let's do three more. These are paper thin. Okay, so now that, okay, so place it in a circular design. Okay, sprinkle with parsley and thyme and the salt. I'm not sure if their amount of ingredients is... Maybe too much? That's a lot to squeeze on here. Trying to mix it up here. A little time there. I'll need some of this later, so maybe I'll just do that. What do you think? I'll have to push that down. It's right at the lip. Okay, I think that's good. Let's get that back in the oven and then I can start the marinade for the quail. Okay, so I move this to the top. I need to get the salt. All right, and then this goes in the oven. Looks like it's definitely going to clear the door. No problems getting that out because it shouldn't rise at all. All right. So now, 30 minutes. So uh, let's move on to the marinade. Okay, so the marinade calls for lemon juice, which I have to do. Uh, let me see, lemon juice, the white wine. I'm using a cooking wine. And then honey. Blueberry vinegar, now that's where I had to make a substitution. I got raspberry vinegar. And the lemongrass, which is going to be the lemon rind. So let me, uh, let me get that all set now. 
Okay, so this definitely would be easier in a larger kitchen. So we're just gonna see if we can get through this. I think I'll just use half of this lemon. I hear sizzling. There's quite a bit of sizzling going on right now. This in here. This is definitely an older one. All right. I noticed what I did the first time, there was a lot in there. I don't know if you heard that in the background. <laughs> now the quail is coming up, so. Ooh, look at this, it's got a little channel. It seems to be leaking everywhere. Boy, the sizzling is happening. I have to say that is one juicy lemon. Okay. All right. Let me get the next thing ready. Okay, a tablespoon of honey. Mrs. LPS just got this tool, so she wanted me to use it. You just push down, and the honey slowly comes out from the bottom, and then it stores on that neat little base. It's close. And then the base catches it. Okay, I'm gonna switch hands here just so I can get the angle right. I should have cleaned that out first. Didn't think about it. Okay, let's just leave that like that. Okay, what I'm going to do though, is I'll add just a little for what's stuck. I just like using this new tool. Okay. And then the blueberry vinegar. Okay, but I'm using the raspberry. One tablespoon of that. Okay, and then how much of the cooking wine? I did not, uh, a quarter of a cup. So let me grab my little measure here. Okay, I think that's it. The lemongrass. So let me grab that. Let's see if I can do this right here. Here, I'll do it this way. It's always stuck in there. The lemongrass was a half a stalk, so I don't know what a half a stalk is because I'm substituting, so I'll leave it at that. Now it's time to whisk that, and it just makes it in the bowl. Well, let, me, uh, let me change my camera angle here. I 
I did feel the honey on the bottom and that's pretty much mixed in now. Okay, I'm warning you now. I'm going to bring the quail in. So if you're queasy with quail or any type of little game bird like this, then this would be the time to skip ahead. Okay, so yes, if you're a faint of heart, then please, hopefully you're not watching this or you've skipped ahead. Now what I would normally use is these shears. They're for cutting through stuff like this. So I'm just going to cut down the center here. You're going to hear bones. to isolate this breast here. Now I'll have to completely clean this out, this whole area. There, sometimes these shears don't work good on the skin. Okay, so they just want the one Breast. All right, let's wash up and then uh, I need to get the bones out of it. Okay, does it say? Well, it says boneless. It doesn't say skinless. Okay, this does say boneless, so there is this bone right here, so we're just going to kind of cut around all that. That's supposed to go in the marinade. See, that's a lot of marinade for one quail breast, but we're gonna use it. I might just do it, do the other one off camera and get them both marinating in there, but here we go. Okay, so yeah, let me do that. Let me grab the quail and put that second breast in there. I'm gonna take a little bit of this out just because it seems excessive. I could have gotten a much bigger bowl, but I don't think we need all this. All right. Okay, so now I'll let those marinate for 10 minutes. All right, there's a lot of sizzling going on. Let me do some cleanup. We'll come back and do the next step. All right, so I got to get back to the potatoes before I move on to the next step. So I'm going to grab that out of the oven. It's piping hot. All right, so before I continue on, I need to get the potatoes out and flipped into another pan. So let's just see here. Oh, they look, look toasty. Yet. All right, so let's just get this over here. All right, so before I continue on, because I still have more ingredients, I have to get the potatoes out, which are really sizzling. you to drain the hot oil so let's get this actually let me just put the whole thing here then I'll adjust and we'll pour out the oil all right so now this is going to get flipped out after I drain the oil They want to make sure that the potatoes are loose, and they are. Okay, hot oil out of the area. 
and I want this mirrored like this. Now the bottom pan is hot, the top pan is not. Let's see if we can squeeze this and then flip. Okay, and then that goes back in the oven. You see it's got a nice brown to that side. So let's put that back in. All right, so this pan is cool. Let's move it into the oven. 15 minutes. All right, let's finish prepping. All right, so I'm debating, since the prep will be done by the time the potatoes are done, for the quail to cook it in the other oven, because that would definitely cook much better there. But I need to chop up a mushroom. I need some bacon. Some oil for the quail. And a little butter, which I'm going to move to the warmer. All right, so let's get that all set. All right, so the warming tray gets the butter. Just kind of goes in at the end. And now let's chop up the mushroom. Okay, so the mushroom is two tablespoons. My guess is this is probably two tablespoons. Probably more than two tablespoons. Now it did say wild mushrooms, but I'm not gonna pick a wild mushroom. I'm using a portobello as a replacement. Okay. It's always the case one just seems to fly around. There's one. Now the bacon was optional. I had it, so I'm going to use it. I think that's pretty good. I think I can just throw all the scraps in there and I'll use it. Every little morsel. Okay, that's done. Now let's cut the bacon up. All right, Ooh, look at that. See, a morsel, a tiny, tiny piece. And I just saw this one here. Let's get it out of there. Now, the best thing and easiest thing for me to cut bacon is with scissors. It's two teaspoons, so it's not a lot. I'll tell you what, we'll just stick with that. Less of the fat. Although, the fat is good. Now, it is time to take the quail out and do that step, so let's do that. See, a straight piece of bacon. Five second rule. All right, let's get the quail set. All right, here we go. Okay, it says to pat it dry. It did change colors with that lemon juice. Now we're going to keep that because we need that later. Then a little olive oil and then salt and pepper. Okay.
I'm going to do both sides. And then I'll flip it back over and I'll probably put a little bit more on that side. I'll wash my hands before I do much more. Peppers, pepper held on. I'm going to put a little more. Okay. All right, let's uh, do the next step. Okay, I'm going to do this one here in this pan. They say push it to one side. We'll put this one in this pan, push it to one side. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, then it says, on the other side, place the mushrooms and the bacon. I might be able to just split this up between the two. And I'll put the rest over here. And then the bacon. So what I'll do is I'm going to cook them both, one in one oven and one in the other, because the potatoes still have another three or four minutes. Okay, so on the other side, place the mushrooms, double smoked bacon. Purists who refuse to cook in anything but an easy bake oven can leave this out. Then some thyme, and I'm going to use this here. Remember I had cut this up? There is a little bit of thyme in here. And nothing wrong with a little extra parsley. Okay. And then some minced garlic. Now, believe it or not, I did not have garlic. I had the pre-minced garlic. That's why I did not do it on the camera. Okay. And then spoon a few teaspoons of the marinade. Let me whisk that. Teaspoons, okay, a few. Ooh, hold on a second, that's the potatoes. This is definitely gonna add the moisture we need. Okay, that does not say anything else about salt and pepper. Oh, and season with a little salt. Okay, I don't know if you need it with the bacon. So I'm just gonna put it on the mushrooms. Okay, there we go. All right, so let me get the potatoes out. Hopefully they're not burnt. And then uh, get these in the oven. All right, here we go. I decided to take the spacer out of the bottom of this one because it actually, that's how, look, it's, it's actually steaming up here. The top of this is so hot. So before I grab it, I think I'll move the potatoes off. Ooh, that was close. Okay. I'll tell you what, we're not going to do 15 minutes. We're going to, well, it says 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to check this in about, uh, let's say six minutes all right all right i'm going to take this off of the oven just because i feel like it's too hot up there and it's going to keep cooking 
Let's move that over here. And they are sizzling. So maybe I can show you inside this oven on the left. Okay, that is sizzling really nice. The bacon is sizzling a little. And uh, all right, continue on. All right, so this one, ooh, look at that. This one is done. So I'm gonna move that over and then I'll check the other one. Right, let's move this one out of here. Look how nice that came out. We'll use that as our one to build and then let's check this one out. Oh, it's getting stuck. Gotta use whatever tool I've got. Okay. Curious to see how this one worked. Okay, it's a little a little pale, but cooked. So I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna put it in this oven. Just for a few minutes while I prep the other one. Alright, let's finish the prep. Okay, so they want. Let's see, there's some steps here. Let me grab a spoon. Okay, so uh, spoon the mushrooms into the bowl. Okay. Place the quail on top. And then finish the sauce by whisking the unsalted butter in the warm marinade. Now, this is pretty much dry. So let me grab the other one because that's got more of a marinade. And then I will, uh, doesn't say what to do with the bacon. Is it for eating or not? Either way, I'm going to set it off to the side because it looks crispy and ready. All right, let me grab that other pan. Ooh, let me uh, scoop the mushroom and the bacon out of here. They're definitely cooked, both of them. We want that sauce. This bacon is, I would say, could be a little crispier in this like the other one. Okay, now pour some butter in that. And mix this up. Okay, so it says, spoon over the quail and top with the potato. Now I got two out of this. When I really probably should have used all that for one, but I wanted to cook both just in case. And then this potato is crispy, yes. All right, so let me scoop some of that out. They're like potato chips. But they probably should have been a little softer, but we're still going to use them. Let's put one of those over there. They look good, though. Just want to eat one of those. Okay, let's give them a taste. Okay, so we know these are crispy. I want to get this quail just to the plate so we can cut it easier than in the bowl and then you can see how nice that looks. Perfectly cooked. Crispy skin. Okay, yeah, the smell is great. Let's put that back in the bowl. All right. Well, let me take a crispy potato. You're gonna hear, hear some crisping going on here. Really nice taste. And the quail with the skin. Let's see if it tastes Gamey, like a game bird. Mmm. That is really nice. 
There's some really good flavors going on here. A lot of them, actually. Okay. I'm going to use the bacon. Maybe they just wanted the grease from the bacon, but I think it's still a good combo. Ooh, the bacon makes it saltier. It's really nice. That is very nice and tasty. A little potato. All right, let's look at this one. You think this one cooked the same? I would say this one is definitely juicier. The skin is not crispy like that one. It's for sure cooked. Let's get this on there. That, the bacon. Ooh. I can't get it all on. I would say definitely the one of the most challenging recipes I've done. More involved. Man, you just get everything just right and then it falls. You taste the cooking wine? It's very nice. Well, there you go. I did it. With some substitutions, but overall I would say that recipe came out great. And thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it. Later. One more crispy potato. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a Lucky Penny, pick it up.